Mary Church out there. They're kind of excited about having you guys come out. I hope you can make it out there for the resurrection. And it's a morning service. And it starts at, uh, well, if you get there for the, for the Bible study, it starts at 9 or 10 in the morning. 9.30, we do a really good Bible study. Up there. And then the regular, we have a fellowship time, and the regular service starts at 11.30. So um, that ought to give you time to get up and, get, and have some breakfast to make it out there. Folks out there are kind of excited about you guys coming out. So, anyhow, I told them that uh, Richard, you were going to play the harmonica and Connie was going to dance. And... <laughs> They're going to have to wait a long time. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, I guess we'll just get right into the message tonight uh, because it's kind of a long one. And, but we'll go through it pretty fast, I think. We do things a little different here than we do normally. You don't ever, you know, sermon just straight preaching and you don't interrupt. But here we kind of do that a little different. We turn it into a Bible study too. So I'll be preaching until I get tired. Then I sit down and then we'll go into a Bible study. And the title of it is that it might be fulfilled, that it might be fulfilled. And so we're starting with the Gospel of John chapter 1. And uh, we go in... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Well, we go back, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos. And that Logos is referring to as the second person of the Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word was, if you take a look at there, uh, in the Greek, that's the same word as face to face. The word was, the word was face to face with God, meaning God the Son was face to face with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And the word was, now here this word was, is a different word. It's the, it's, it's a word that we use today in English is what, essence. So the word was, like the essence of my hand is my hand, and the essence of God is God. And so Christ was the essence of God, and he was God. And that's what it says, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It's an interesting thing when we talk about the beginning. I One time I was watching a, a movie, and in this movie you had this person who uh, had just come into a room, and as they, they were walking into, on the right side of the door, that same person was going out, you see it on the back side, on the left side. And the idea, what they were saying was, that beyond those two walls, those doors, there's nothing, nothing exists. That that's the end of everything, that there's nothing in existence past that. Well, that's, that is kind of a, a notion that's far beyond our ability to understand. It's looking good. But when you try to think about this here, God created this universe here, and the universe, uh, it has no end. There's no end. And with us, you know, everything has to have a beginning and the end. And the question is always, well, what's on the, the other side of that? What's on the other side? And the idea that it's endless for us to try to comprehend something that is totally endless. Well, at the same time, God, has always been, and he is pre-existent. So before there was anything, there was God, before there was anything. And you heard about the, the land before time. Well, God existed before time existed. And time is the measurement of what? Time is the, from moment to moment, from incident to incident, uh, from distance to distance. So time is the measurement. But before there was such a thing as time, there was God, and God created time. Now all of us, we are, we kind of harnessed by time. We live in a world that's governed by time. We look at our watches all the time. We look at the clocks all the time. We're governed by time. Uh, time controls us, okay? Um, actually, time made some of us guys uglier than we used to be, okay? And, and we were never pretty though, but right? But anyhow, 
You say, but God controls time. Time is what God says it is. Uh, he can go forward, he can go backwards. Time will be what God says. He's in complete control. Now that's another concept that's very, very hard for us to try to grasp uh, because it's so far beyond any of our abilities. Now, when we get to heaven, eternity starts. So when eternity starts, what does that mean? It mean, time ceases. There is no more time. I'll bet we don't find one clock in heaven. Okay. That'll be a good thing, huh? Yep. Right. So, God had no initial beginning, as we know it. God is eternal. He existed throughout all of eternity. He had no beginning. He has no end. At, uh, and at some point, we know, in the past, uh, before he created the earth, and all of us, uh, angels existed with God. And so, long before the six days of creation. Now, if we go over to Ezekiel chapter 28, we're going to take a look at one of these angels who was quite a nefarious character, would you say, Big Jim? Did you leave Linda at home today, Big Jim? Did you leave Linda at home today? No, she's sick. Oh, is she? We'll have to pray for her. How are you feeling? You're okay? Okay. We wondered why you didn't move in last week. But, uh, Everything's in the back of the car. Oh, are you, are you going there tonight or tomorrow? No, I, I gotta work out something in the car. Okay. <clears throat> I'll be there. All right. We just wanted to make sure that you don't need our help or anything. All right, in Ezekiel chapter 28, we start in verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold in the workmanship of thy tabarets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now this Eden that he's talking about was the Eden in heaven. It was God's Eden in heaven that he was in. Now, the Eden on earth was made after. It was made to be like God's Eden in heaven. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. That's where the Garden of Eden was, upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in the ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. And by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled it in the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings, and they, they be, that they may behold thee. Now, here Satan was the, the most beautiful a creature that God ever created. And the next was what? Eve. Eve was a prototype, the most beautiful woman that was ever created. And here, what would what would have attracted her attention in the garden? What attracts a, a woman's attention? Beauty. Well you show him a diamond. Remember when he his clothed he was clothed with diamonds and rubies and that a lot of people get the impression that he, he was like a, a serpent slithering around a tree. No, Satan walked upon two legs. He walked upon two feet. And he was the most beautiful creature. You see, it wasn't until when he tempted Eve that God had made him crawl the serpents upon their belly to eat the doves. And so, here now, what happened? When iniquity was found in him, so he was cast out of the, the Garden of Eden in heaven, cast off. In fact, he was in the very throne room of God. And he was cast down to the Garden of Eden. And here now, here, uh, 
He was already there when Adam and Eve showed up in the garden. And so, what happened here? Well, God created man with a free will, uh, just as he had done with the angels. He had created the angels with a free will. When Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan, well, they fell into disobedience. And of course they sinned against God. <coughs> and we go over to Genesis chapter 1. And we see that God had made man in his image. Now we see what we see here. It's a conversation between the Trinity. And verse 26, what we see from Genesis to Revelation, all through God's Word, the body, God the Father gives the marching orders, God the Son carries them out, and the Holy Spirit provides the power. This is the way that, that all the way through Scripture. In verse 26 of Genesis 1, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created it, he him, and male and female created him, he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing uh, that moveth upon the earth. Well, here now, you say, you say, well, how was man made? He's made in the likeness and the image of God. And that is, God is a triune being. You have the Father, the Soul, and the Holy Spirit. We are triune beings. We have a body, soul, and a spirit. So what makes us, what distinguishes us from the animals? Well, you know, I have often have people, you know, that one of the things people always want to seem to ask is, are there going to be animals in heaven? Are there going to be animals in heaven? They want to know if their dog or their cat went to heaven when they died, okay? Well, dogs and cats are different from us is that uh, People say, well, I know, I, I know my cat or my dog had a soul. Well, the soul is who you are. See, the difference between this, your spirit, okay, and your soul is your soul is who you are, your personality. Okay. This is why Scripture refers to it, and uh, 5,000 souls were saved that day. These are, these are independent individual person, personalities. Your spirit is your energy, your life force. It's either given by God or uh, you wish it had been given by God. Okay. Is that cold? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anyhow. <laughs> and that's the difference between your soul and your spirit and your driving force. And so now here you have that, that conversation between God the Father and he says, let us, when he means let us, that means God the Son. You do the work, the Holy Spirit, you provide the power. And then God blessed them. And then he gives to them the very first uh, command or charge of God in the entire Bible, right here. Be fruitful and multiply. That was the very first uh, command that God gave man, was to be fruitful and multiply. It's in total opposition of what the world government is teaching today. They're talking about depopulating the world, where he says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Now, that word replenish is not the way we use it today. That word replenish in the Hebrew, if you look it up, simply means to fill to the top, fill to the top, or to overflowing. And that's, that was the first command that God gave men. And so now, <clears throat> if we turn over to Genesis chapter 3, here we see, by this time now, old, old Satan, old Lucifer becomes Satan. He's cast down and, and he's hanging around the garden. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, and the Lord God made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Well, the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Well, first of all, God never told Eve not to eat of the fruit. He told Adam. Adam instructed Eve. Now, Adam might have told Eve, don't, don't even touch it. Okay, but God never told him that. And so now, remember the three temptations we talked about last week that Satan uses, and he uses it today on people. Here he's tempting them with, one, the lust of the flesh, meaning the fruit was good to eat to satisfy the stomach. Two, the lust of the eyes. It looked very, very good to eat. And then three, the lust to be like God. To us to be like God. Remember, that's what got Satan in all of his trouble to begin with. Uh, he was so perfect and so powerful that in his mind, hey, listen, compared to me, you know, everybody else is, well, they're not much, right? But what was it that really set him off? Remember what he understood? It was in the throne room of God. And that someday, as the Apostle Paul was saying, that we Christians, those of us that were made in the image of God, we will be judging angels. Now here's old Satan. Yeah. We might have asked questions. Yeah, that means I'll sit down now. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on my feet all day. You said, uh, <clears throat> lust of the, what was that? You want the taste? Pardon? Lust of the flesh means yeah, food. But, 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 and, and lust of the eyes, sight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what was the other Be one? like God. Be like God. The desire to be like don't, God. Don't you think a lot of people today, that's a real issue with them? Well, of course it is. He... Well, but what I'm saying is they're, they've got good jobs, they've, they've got money, they run here, they run there. Uh, they can self-sustain themselves and they really don't need God. I think that's what's got America in trouble. Well, and, you, how, how often do you hear this? He's a self-made man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as a self-made man. There never has been and there never will be. Is, is that right though? That's pretty much... Uh, yeah, it is. It's the very right. same thing out there today. Uh, people... Uh, Think, you know, they're kind of their own God. You know, they they don't need God. They don't. They've got everything they need. They got money in the bank. They're well off, and it's like, who needs God? What did Jesus say about a rich man getting into heaven? Yeah. Why is it so hard for a rich man to get into heaven? Because they, they depend on God, really. They depended upon their own wealth for their own power, yeah. uh, uh, and like. Oprah, Oprah says she is her own source of salvation. That she doesn't need any other source of salvation. Boy, is she in for a rude awakening, huh? Yeah. Right? She's a sophisticated liar. Well, can you imagine when she dies? Yeah. All of that money is going to be left behind, right? Yeah. And it's appointed to all men once to die and then? Boy, that's when she has runs into an extremely rude awakening. Okay, and how many times have you heard these other people say, <clears throat> "I can't wait to stand before God because when I do, I'm going to ask Him why He allows all the sickness, why He allows all the disease." What's wrong with that picture? I don't think we're going to have anything to say. You know, when my mother was. What's the Bible say? The Bible says every head will bow and every knee will bend. So you're going to be on your knees before Almighty God. He's going to be doing the talking. And they're going to be doing the listening, like it or not. What about your mother? Well, when, when she, before she died, I mean, she would go back when things 30 years ago. And it was real to her. And, and I really feel as we live, there's like a, a movie or video recording in her head. And when we die and we face God, that's going to be played back. If we haven't asked God for forgiveness and He erases all that, all that, we will condemn ourselves. We know the sins we make. 
just from that video in her brain that she certainly had. Well, you know, it's a inter very interesting thing because a lot of people feel that, uh, uh, like the prophecies, we've got over 1,800 prophecies in the Bible, and they, they come down exactly. In fact, as we go through this message, we're going we're gonna to hit on a lot, a lot of them. And so these prophecies, as they're fulfilled exactly the way it's said, it's like, it's like this, you're watching uh, a DVD, and that God has, all of these things have already happened. Remember what Solomon said? There's nothing new. What has been will be, and, you know. It's like it's already happened, and it's like we're living in like a movie, and this movie is being played out over and over. You see, God has the ability to, to change anything and everything, okay? It's like when we can, we can stop, and, or you can edit or erase. Well, God controls time. He can make what has been, never have been, or what never has been, we, He can make. People don't understand that. That's what He says, that there is nothing that God cannot do. And that's a, that's a concept when you, when you think of it, because we can only think of it on, on, with our abilities and our our abilities to conceive this stuff is very, very limited. Okay, <clears throat> it's very limited. We are. Well, that's just for Thursday night. This is Sunday night. Oh, oh you, you, so that's for the classes. Oh, that's for you. Okay. Oh, he just wanted to get all your names so he can remember what oh. your names are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He was trying to get credit. He wasn't here. Oh. He was signing his names. you got to watch this guy. Yeah. <laughs> question. Well, I have a question. Well, just a comment. Okay. I, I always thought that um, the dogs and cats would be there because there's uh, lions and lambs, horses. And Those lions and the lambs you're talking about is during the Millennial Kingdom, on, but that's on Earth. That's... That's not in heaven, but yeah, there is going to be. Now, we're leaving. If we're leaving in Revelation 19, verse 11, from heaven to earth on horses, that means they, they got to be there, huh? But how do we know? Okay, let's go back. How do we know that there's going to be a Garden of Eden? What was in the Garden of Eden? What does he tell you in Revelation 22? That there's going to be 12 manner of fruit, talks about the rivers of life, the three rivers. So that Garden of Eden on earth was made after the Garden of Eden here are there in heaven. Okay. So yeah, they're going to be there. But now what's the difference between animals and people? See, animals, they, they, they can understand that if they do one thing, they'll get rewarded, and they do another thing, they get punished. Like, I got that little scampers at home, okay? And every now and then he has a, one of his favorite things is dumping over in my office the trash can. He just likes to do that, okay? Now, when I come in there, all I have to do is look at that trash can and look at him, and automatically he, his tail is tucked out like this. You know he did a bad thing. See, the difference is an animal cannot reason. They know. This they get rewarded, this they get punished. They don't know why this is bad, and they don't know why this is good. Either do liberals, and that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're out there doing what they're doing off that hollow and it's That's why and Hillary it's lies so much. Huh? <laughs> Black Lives Matter, yeah, acting. <clears throat> uh, they're, product, they're products of evolution. They tuck their tails between their legs, too. Uh, 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 and I couldn't believe the placards these people were carrying. Unbelievable, all these young people. Uh, the things that were written on they were using, uh, you know, just absolute profanity on there. I don't know if any of you saw that. I was couldn't believe Fox News would show that. They used the F word there on the sign. But they would show that. Nice. And then they focused in a lot of these young women, okay? And they had a chant about Trump uh, to eat their, you know, can't use the word, but, but what they were saying, I can't even, it was on the news, I can't even repeat on the radio, okay? That's how bad it was, so, uh, Trump and the rump, you know, in the, in the gut, but they were using some, some nasty language. But anyhow, 
That's the difference between animals and people. Well, I know animals don't have souls, but I just always thought I'd see no pets. Yeah. You had a question. Yes. Um, I also wondered, like, uh, when um, the serpent, like you said, he was Satan, um, well, the animals, did they speak in the Garden of Eden? Because she wasn't the least bit, apparently, um, shocked. Well, you know what? That, that's a very good, good question because a lot of theologians believe, yes, that there were a time that animals had a limited ability to, to, to speak and to communicate with men, okay? And <clears throat> I hear, and I remember, uh, at that time he walked upon two legs and he, and he, he, had, he was the most beautiful creature God ever created, okay? Now, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so, uh, 